Welcome back to Zero Tolerance uh, for another episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinist. Today we're going to cover a couple things. Uh, one is a couple test burns on our new uh, EDM and then sometimes when you are putting in settings you can have some things go wrong. Let's get started. This is going to be our first uh, test burn after Jim straightened us out with some of our settings. And uh, I think it's, we're, we're going to attempt to make, was it nine cavities? Three electrodes. With three electrodes. So this is electrode number one and position number one. Let's check it out. advantages of this machine is the ability to monitor and sensor the thermal expansion of the temperature around the machine so that we can keep our accuracies as close as possible. Um, obviously we got a door on the side of the building over here and when it opens it'll change degrees probably 10-15 degrees in here and you'll actually see it on this monitor and the machine will compensate for that so that's a huge advantage for us trying to do tight tolerance. As I get closer to 50 years old and learning new machines, it is sometimes it's getting more and more difficult for me and my hat's off to the guys uh, in the shop that are uh, still working and learning and growing. Uh, it's not, not easy, but I, all the guys here at our shop are constantly learning and it's, uh, it's, it's a breath of fresh air to see as uh, these machines require more and more input. The newer machines especially need all the information possible to make the burn as accurate as it can. We're on our seventh location and we are roughing these out. We're going to see how we get along with tomorrow morning, see if uh, three electrodes made it through with very little wear. We'll see. This is the block that we were burning in the EDM, and I just want to show you what this looks like. Uh, and we're going to make it transparent so we can see underneath. So this is the features we're, we're burning into the block. You can see the sharp corners, and there's actually holes underneath, and these are ejection holes. And then we're going to look at this electrode we have. And as you know, we were looking at trying to use three electrodes to do all nine locations. So now that you see what this looks like, we can uh, go back there and see how we did. Here is the results of what we had to do. Our mission was can we get away with nine locations with three electrodes and we did a pretty good job. This, this machine, knowing not knowing how to run it exactly how it should be run yet because we're still learning it. We have electrode one, two, three, and it was very good, but I decided to make one last electrode to make it as, just crisp it all up just to make sure. Um, very impressed to do nine spots with four electrodes. Uh, that is a huge advantage, having to cut less electrodes and still get good results. You know, based on your overburn and what you're trying to um, achieve, you can get away with more or less. Um, but we had a 10 thou overburn. We used 5,000 overburn settings, and we had some very good results for, for what we were trying to achieve. So thumbs up with this machine so far, and uh, we're going to be actually doing a lot more with it. So I will report as we go. One thing I wanted to talk about, too, is when I learned how to do this over 25 years ago, I was running an old Accelo machine, and I literally had to make four electrodes to do one location. So we had four electrodes, like I have here, and for each additional cavity, I had to add an electrode. So I would end up having a pile of electrodes to do a similar job, um, which now I can reduce a lot of that work um, one is the fixturing, but two is the amount of electrodes and the technology as it changes and evolves. And that's one of the questions I have is, you know, how do you decide that it'd be worth it to get a new machine 
that can do more work uh, with less effort? Um, it's a big question. It's, a, it's an ROI question for, for a company looking to make a big investment because the machines are expensive and it's a lot easier to buy or make a couple of electrodes more than you think you need um, to achieve what you're after. But if you look at it in a bigger picture over a year's time, all these little extra extra labor costs and, and cost of material, they can add up big, big time. And so uh, finding out where you land as to whether or not you need a new machine or whether you, you should consider it. Uh, that that's a that's a huge question. We we asked our question. Or we asked ourselves that question many years ago, and I I made a I took a big risk and got a nice um, Charmi at the time, and it wasn't brand new, but it made a huge difference in how I I took three older, 22 year old machines and I replaced them with one one newer machine, and um, I haven't looked back. It's been a huge advantage uh, for us. Thank you for joining us for our episode of Learn to Burn. Um, we have a lot of good work coming, and we're hoping to share some of the things we're doing on our five axis, and also show you how using our system for fixturing, we're gonna be able to do our cuts and have our burns blend into it. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about types of tool paths and directions. Remember to subscribe and like, and we will see you next time. I don't have it. I don't have it. <laughs> Toolpath what? Are you videoing that? <laughs> so tune in next month for more editing. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>